If you want to make your meetings more effective, more efficient and more fruitful, then Miro is probably one of the tools that you can try out in order to make it happen. If you happen to actually found Miro somewhere in the internet or you just discovered it and you are not sure how to use it and how to start or maybe you got confused, this video should also be helpful to you. Today I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can use when starting a new Miro board, when starting with Miro as a tool. So if you want to get inspired, keep on watching. So the first thing that you see once you open a new Miro board is the suggestion for templates. And as you can see, there are a lot of templates in here that you can browse, that you can look for by browsing through different categories like meetings, ideation, strategy and planning and so on. But you can also use the search function, which I recommend to do. And by, for example, tapping in there the meeting, you will see some of the boards for the meetings. If you will tap in brainstorm, then you will see a couple of examples for brainstorming and so on then so forth. So if you want to get inspired by someone else's idea there are i think hundreds of these in here um, you can always find something useful or and this is what we are going to do now you can start with a blank board and the blank board as you can see here is blank right obviously but in order to organize things i recommend you to use frames so in here you have frames and you can either use the particular size like a4 for example or a letter for example which is smaller or you can create your custom frame and custom frame can be resized depending on how big you want it to be and when you will zoom in and zoom out here in the down right corner you can just make it bigger depending on your needs so this is how you can organize your work let's say that you're running a workshop and you would like the two days to be separate then you can create two different frames that are separate and then run one day on one frame and another one on the other frame if you are working on a couple of different agenda points on a meeting you can also use frame to put the thoughts on a certain topic in there as simple as that. If you want to copy paste things, you can do this in Miro. So if you, I will control C, control V right now, it will copy the exactly same frame. So you don't have to bother with figuring out what size is this, or you can just click control D or command D on MacBook as I'm doing. And here you have the same size of the frame. So this is the frame that will help you organize things. And some of the useful things that I think come in handy are the shapes and sizes, shapes and lines here. And you can create a shape, which will, for example, look as your title bar, let's say. You can color it in a certain way, like for example, orange. Then you can type in the title. Let's say that I'm going to discuss marketing ideas in here, perfect. And if I want to create sort of a frame for me, then I am dragging it in here. As you can see, it now covered the whole thing. So I would like to leave it empty, boom. And I would like to make it a bit bigger when it comes to the border. Oh, that's too big. So I'm gonna stick with the second one. And now I'm going to fit it in here. And in order to keep it as it is, I'm going to just point and click in here highlight those two things. So I'm going to click on this one and with control or command on the second one, I now have highlighted myself two objects, which I'm going to group and then I'm going to lock them down. And why am I locking things down in Miro? Very simple, I'm gonna show you right now. So if I would not lock them down, I'm going to lock them and then I'm adding some sticky notes in here on the left, which you can see here, which are the perfect way to brainstorm on things. I am right now clicking Command D in order to copy paste them. As you can see, this works really, really nicely and really fast. I will duplicate multiple. And now what I'm going to do is that once I am clicking here or highlighting, I am not highlighting the thing in the background. As you can see, I need to long press on it to unlock. And this helps a lot when it comes to uh, collaborating on the mirror board, because if I would not lock it down, and someone would, for example, click in here by mistake, they would move things around during the meeting. And we don't want that to happen because this is just problematic and can cause a lot of different issues during the meeting, especially if you have multiple people in there. So right now I'm going to lock it again. And as you can see, 
I can move stuff in here, but there is no way in which I am moving the frame in the background. So this is how you can organize your board and this is how you can use it uh, pretty efficiently. There are also a couple of things that you can use in order to make the meeting more efficient. So first and foremost, you can of course use the templates that were accessible at the beginning. But since we wanted to create a board of our own, we are going to stick with it. And in order to make the board more interesting, more accessible or just more handy for a certain meeting, you can also add files to Miro. And I'm going to show you one more interesting thing that you can use, which is like personalizing the menu on the left. So let's say that you would like to upload a file. If I will go to tools and type in upload in here, there are images and icons available, but also the files that I can upload from Google Drive and more as the mirror says. I'm going to click the pin to toolbar. And as you can see right now, I have the upload button here on the left. And if I don't want it anymore, I can just unpin it and go back and forth about it as I please. So this is how you can personalize the menu on the left. If you want to upload a file, you can click in here and you can use, for example, my device, you can use your Google Drive, can connect your Google Drive to Miro and so on and so forth. Let's say that I would like to collaborate with my team on uh, some presentations and I would like to use my brand book in order to do that. So I'm going to upload a file right now. I'm going to click on upload. I'm going to choose my device. And let's say that I want to collaborate with my team on some of my brand related ideas. And I would like to use my brand book for that purpose. So I'm going to upload a PDF file in here. And as you can see, it appeared, I can resize it depending on the, the size that I want. And I can browse through the actual document on the mirror board in order to keep it neat, simple, don't leave my brainstorm collaboration board in order to do that. And as you can see, I have my brand colors in here and so on. So that's really handy when it comes to collaboration because you can, for example, upload files that you've received from your customer, from your client, from your stakeholders, add them to the mirror board and then browse them. This works with Excel sheets, this works with Google Docs, this works with Word Docs and PDFs and so on and so forth. So that also comes in handy when it comes to visual collaboration. If you would like to get more valuable information about B2B sales and marketing, join our email broadcast, where we share resources with valuable information, marketing tricks and case studies of successful campaigns, proven scenarios for B2B sales, useful tools, and a ton more to help you improve your sales and marketing game and generate more leads. Furthermore, if you want to facilitate the meeting efficiently, you can just hit in the upper right corner here the timer box and you can create a timer. You can pick your music, for example, and then give people one minute to collaborate on a certain thing. And I'm going to pause it right now. And this will allow to keep the meeting smooth. I'm using timers all the time because I am just telling people, okay, write down your ideas in five minutes. And what it does, it's actually making a meeting more efficient in a way that people do not have to talk with each other, go from one topic to another. It just makes it more efficient to like write down your ideas or answer this question. And someone is just putting this in there and there are different things that are appearing on the sticky notes here. And one sticky note after another, you can fill in the gaps, but at the same time, what you can use in Miro nowadays, which is like pretty latest kind of a feature, is that you can highlight it, you can generate some ideas with AI, and you can ask it for, for example, generate ideas for marketing campaigns. And I'm going to click the generate sticky notes, and we are going to see what it will actually produce. As you can see, there are a couple of ideas, like user-generated content contest, social media influence or collaboration, that kind of stuff. It's pretty basic when it comes to that, but at the same time, it's better than nothing. If you will highlight these sticky notes, what you can also use is that you can summarize them in a document, and this is really cool. So summarize this with headlines and bullet points, and then I'm going to generate a document. and. As you can see, it actually does a pretty good job of summarizing things. And then you can either export this to a PDF and send it to people that have attended the meeting. You can also copy the content of that and for example, put it in a doc, in an email or something like that. Or you can just focus on discussing this if you think it's relevant by clicking on this button in here to enter the focus mode. So 
that's that's one of the cool features. So that's it when it comes to giving you a brief idea about the AI capabilities. There are more, more to it, but just wanted to highlight that. Let's say that you have finished work on the actual meeting and you would like to share the content of the meeting with someone else. What you can do is that you can click those dots in the upper left corner and that you can go to the board and you can click export. And you can save your board as image, as PDF, export the content to the spreadsheet. You can do a lot of stuff with it in order to make it pretty efficient and looking good. Let's say that I would like to only share this one with my team because everyone has access to the brand book. I'm going to click export. And as you can see here, I have this nicely looking JPEG file with all of the ideas that I can then share throughout various ways like email, airdrop, or do whatever you want with it. If you happen to use the mirror board before the meeting, a cool idea is to actually present the content to its stakeholders, to attendees, before starting the actual meeting. And in order to do that, you need to click the present in here. And when you click the present, it will actually show a particular frame on a full screen. So if you want to walk someone through frames work like slides. So in here you can click the next frame. Of course, it's blank right now, so you are not going to see anything on it. But this is a good idea to actually share that with people before the actual meeting in order to walk them through, for example, the main points that we are going to discuss and so on and so forth. So this is how the present button looks like. Another thing that comes in handy is the follow. So if you happen to work with multiple people, you can ask them at the very beginning of the meeting to actually click on in here to attend these and to click on a certain person like me. I'm the only one person in the board right now, so you will not see it. But if you will click on a certain person, you will just follow their cursor as they go through the board. This means actually that you will always see where they are currently with the bigger boards. This helps a lot. And one last thing that I would like to share with you is the comment function. So if you happen to work with people asynchronously, meaning that people are giving feedback on certain things in different times, because also Miro is pretty useful for this one, then you can use the comment feature in here. And if someone will add a comment here and post it, you will be able to see who commented what and when, and this actually helps with getting feedback on website and designs, etc. Boom. And then you can, of course, resolve the comment and you not, no longer be visible in here. And this is pretty interesting because you can have discussions on certain points and then resolve them similarly to a classic docx document or any other document that you can share with people. So this one is also pretty uh, useful for collaboration. That's it when it comes to basics of Miro. Let me know if this video was anyhow helpful to you. If it was, then make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you would like me to cover anything else regarding Miro or visual collaboration or collaboration in general or B2B marketing and sales, let me know in the comment section down below. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.